Hello everyone, welcome back to the CUIPT YouTube channel. This week we are looking at IYPT 2020 Problem 2, Inconspicuous Bottle. While I was planning this video, I was struck by a devastating news. Mohammed and his sister Zinab, two of our colleagues of STEM Fellowship, passed away in the recent plane crash in Iran. Muhammad's passion for spreading the joy of STEM has touched countless number of students. He is a passionate leader, committed mentor, and empathetic friend who has left an immense impact on all those who know him. Muhammad is a co-founder of CAYPT. He is the person that brought Canada into the IYPT community. Many of the current COIPT committee members are amongst the first to participate and are endlessly grateful for his impact. We would like to name the COIPT Student Leadership Award after his name to remember everything he did for STEM education and COIPT. Although Zinab have never worked with our committee, we are sure that she is just as warm-hearted, determined, and enthusiastic like Muhammad. Their immense impact on our lives and all the lives that they touch through their work will not be forgotten. May they rest in peace. Their legacies lives on and it is our mission to follow their footsteps to promote STEM education to students across the world. So allow me to present you Inconspicuous Bottle. The problem statement tells us that when we put a lit candle behind a bottle, if you blow on the bottle from the opposite side, the candle may go out, as if the bottle was not there at all. The problem wants us to explain this phenomenon. Looking at this problem, there are two physics problems that we need to be concerned about. The first one is what kind of airstream is needed to blow out the candle. Second is how did the airstream get past the bottle? Before we attempt to answer these questions, let's talk about how a candle works. Here I have some paraffin wax candles. As the candle burns, a small pool of molten wax is formed. The liquid wax is then carried up the wick and vaporized. The vapor is burned to sustain the fire. This is why when you try to light wax directly, you will not succeed. When the wick is present, the wax can be burned without a problem. We know that for a fire to burn, there are three criteria that are needed. We need a fuel, an oxidizer, and sufficiently high temperature to sustain the reaction. When we blow air, we are disturbing the paraffin vapor concentration around the flame and lowering the temperature of the air around the flame. We are changing the concentration of the oxidizer, in this case the oxygen in the air, by a very small amount. As we exhale, we change about 4% of the air from oxygen to carbon dioxide. We effectively cut the oxygen concentration by about 24%. All three factors contribute to the candle going out. These factors can be perfectly demonstrated by these two phenomena. As we blow air on the candle flame, the flame not only flickers, but it also slants to one side. The fire can only burn where the paraffin vapor is at, so this tells us that the vapor is both rising due to its lower density compared to air, and blown to the side by the airstream. The second phenomenon is that if we blow out a candle, we can relight it by just lighting the smoke above it. Now the question is, which one of the three effects contributes most to the candle going out. I'll leave that for you to find out. Now we're ready to investigate how the airstream passed the bottle. To demonstrate this, I found a standard sized wine bottle and removed the stickers. I used a leaf blower with a thin vinyl tube to simulate my breath. Fluid dynamics is quite complicated, but the simple explanation that everyone gives is the Quanda effect. 
The Quanda effect is essentially telling us that a jet of fluid will attach to a nearby surface and stay attached even if the surface curves away from the direction of the initial jet flow. So in this case, the air attaches to the bottle and flows around it. It reaches the candle behind it and blows it out. Here I placed a candle at different distances and you can see the effect that it has on the leaf blower's ability to blow out the candle. To conclude today's video, I'll show you the laminar flow around a wine bottle. I used incense smoke as a tracer and let the smoke rise naturally due to its lower density. If you like this video, please continue to support CYPT and our projects. I'll see you next time.